Hi everyone, um, I'm coming to you with a new video, a new couple of videos I'm trying to do. A lot of people have been asking me that I've been bumping into and people recognise me and stuff from YouTube that's saying, oh, can you do some more tips and stuff like that? So, look, I'm no expert yet. Hopefully that's by the end of the experiment, but um, I've learned a lot along the way. So, um, you know, I'm playing at a, a, fairly, a fairly decent standard at the moment. So, um, getting some results and there's a lot of things I've learned from, you know, from what I've been doing that hopefully can help you. Um, or someone you know, maybe, whatever. Um, but yeah, give them a try, see how they work out for you. But um, this, this video is all about uh, guaranteeing to improve your darts. So with guaranteeing to improve your darts, there's a couple of things you need to do first of all. One is a, lot, a little bit of time, however much you can do, to practice it. There's nothing more important um, than doing some alone practice. It's okay practicing with someone, it's great, you know, playing a little match here and there, but there is no substitute. When you need to work on something to improve, unless you can play every hour that you, know, that you possibly can, which is difficult for a lot of us, um, you know, you need to be able to work on things specifically to help your game. And there's no good just throwing darts or throwing darts. Sometimes they're not gonna improve. You're gonna, you're gonna play at a slightly higher level if you're playing all the time, but if you don't change nothing, nothing changes. So this, this is all about um, changing little bits and pieces in your throw that may make a big difference for you. So changing little bits and pieces in your throw is the biggest way to improve, not just your throw, but the easiest way to improve what you're doing. Doesn't matter what standard you're at, you know, it really does depend on your game particularly. So there's no one size fits all. You have to go and do the work, you have to go and look at what's gonna help your game. So, the first thing is look at your game. So go back, take a film, take, take some film, take a, a slow motion video if you can, or get someone to look and look at what you're doing in your throw. So try to get one from on the side, throw like this, the other way, and then a face on. So you can have a look properly at what exactly is going on in your throw. The main point is variables. What we're looking for is things that change during a throw. So. If you notice the difference between a professional dart player, for example, and someone who just picks it up every now and again and they just play in the pub or whatever, there's a big difference. And this is an example of what that difference might look like. So, you can see the difference between the two examples. Yes, they're very exaggerated, but they're very important to know the differences. What you notice straight away is a professional player sort of throw, and I'm not a professional player, but obviously mimicking what I'm trying to do, is trying to make sure that every throw is the same. You watch someone like Phil Taylor, Michael Van Gerwen, any of the top players that have hit a very high level, generally they, they look a little bit robotic sometimes. They look like they're not doing anything different every time. You know, so every time they're in exactly, it doesn't matter where your start point is, wherever you feel comfortable, but going back to the same start point every time. This is something I'm trying to work out myself at the moment as well, just because where I've played a lot of matches, my technique has come away from what it was before. So I know I play slightly different in matches than what I do when I'm on the practice board. Obviously where adrenaline comes in, you're slightly different. So it does make a big difference on that. So for me, try and get back to wherever your set point is, get back to the same point and then you go. Same point and then you go. And that's what you wanna try and achieve every time is that same set point, feel where it is and get used to that. The other point is what is happening during your throw? So is there a lot of variables with your movement? So you wanna look at your stance. So try and get one of your full body as well. So you can see, are you swaying? Now there is some players that sway a lot, you know, like John Henderson, for example. I don't know how he does it. <laughs> but he's been doing it for so long, he, he's in the motion of it. But when he's playing badly, sometimes that comes back to bite him. So swaying is not obviously a good thing to keep the same momentum every time. But if you've got a major sway, sway and you can't get rid of it, just try to feel exactly the same motion every time. Try to think that you're throwing exactly the same every time. Repetition is the key. So you wanna try to look, if someone took a video of you, you'd ideally look no different on the first dart than you would the second or the third. 
you know, you see a lot of people, they, they're all sorts, their arm goes all over the place on the, say the second or third dart as they're walking towards the board. That can be a big, a big problem sometimes. So look for little variables in your stance. Look for what's different between one throw to the next in the way you follow through. That's a big thing for a lot of people as they follow through. Now, some people can come through and they'll follow through straight. Yeah, I, I personally come through straight and some people will go out to the side. So they'll, they'll follow through they'll follow through that way instead of straight um, and some people straight down. So it really depends on your own throw, what way you go, but look to see if you're throwing a lot of darts to one side, it may be the case that each time you're, you're flicking that out more violently to one side than, or you're going further down if you're dropping. It depends on your throw, but try to look and pinpoint the differences, you know, shortcut them and, and, and see what throw looks different to what throw. Have a look yourself so you can actually see what's looking different. Because that's all you've got to change. If you're doing the same thing, it's a lot easier to tell if you're hitting, say, a lot of fives or a lot of ones than if you're going in between the two, because then you're just adjusting for each one. But it may be your grip pressure. It may be something simple that you're doing every time. But unless you're you know, doing a lot of hours, it's hard to know exactly what you're doing. But this video is the idea of shortcutting that break it down. So go look at your throw, see what the variables there are. So stance, grip, as in the grip pressure. Is your grip the same every time? Are you, are you gripping there and then you're gripping a bit further back? Are you picking up the same place? Could be, could be a number of things. So go for all them things. And then when you get back to the board, just try and get back on the same, same thing every time. So same place and same feeling. Try to feel exactly the same way every time. And there's another drill I'm going to show you that's a little bit different to this, but what it does is it allows you to adjust mid throw. The hardest pe thing people um, really struggle with sometimes is being able to adjust, you know. Have you ever done this? Yeah, and that's the difference is being able to adjust is really, really important, you know, to get that last start in. What you really wanna do is be able to go like this. Going like this means that not only can you drop in, go outside, outside, in, you can also go outside, inside, and then know where you are. So it's being able to find the biggest difference in how your arm feels. And the ultimate is when, you, when you're hitting a 180, for example, is when you throw the first one, you just let it follow, you just let it follow. You're not doing anything different with, with this tension here. That's the key point is grip pressure's gotta be just straight through. So that's one thing to remember. And the key, key point out of all of this is you've got to put in some hours. And no one's going to do it for you. <laughs> um, no one can tell you what you can do, how much you should practice. But the, my golden rule for practicing is you're better off heavier sessions that are more intense to actually try and do something to, to sort of shock your muscles and, and actually do something about it than you are doing one hour, one hour a week. For me personally, that's what I've found. I know it's counterproductive to what a lot of the advice out there is, which again, try it, see what, we, what works for you. You know, everybody's, but everybody's body is different, but for me and for, for other people I've helped and stuff like that is, if you're doing something, if you're playing, you could play for 10 years, right? And you could play every week for 10 years and not get any better. Why is that? Because your body is not being told it needs to change in any way. So your muscles don't need to adapt. Now, if you played for 10 hours a day for one week, at the end of that week, your body is going to be screaming at you to do something about it. So therefore, the brain is going to get into get action to, right, we need to change something here. We need to develop our muscles and the muscles are going to develop. And that is what a lot part of the growth period is, in my opinion, to grow. You have to be able to, to especially these muscles, your hand muscles, your forearm muscles. When you're frying heavy sessions and you're tearing those muscles, they have to grow back stronger. And that's what's happened during the 10,000 hours experiment is Every time I do heavy sessions, every time I do, uh, you know, at the moment I'm playing a lot of tournaments back to back. I've just played the last five days back to back till late at night. I'm starting to see the benefit. Yesterday I was starting, when I was on the practice board at a tournament, for the first time I can remember, I started going 180, 140, 180, 140. And I've never done that before. So for me, that's the sort of advice I would say is just make sure that whatever you're doing, do it intensely. There's no point in you just 
going up to the board, chucking a few darts for half an hour and then going, I wouldn't even bother. It's not gonna make a difference. If you're gonna do something a lot specific time, you're focused, and even if it is an hour a week, that's fine. Whatever you can do is better than doing nothing. But just make sure whatever time you've got in that hour, maybe throw six darts instead of, instead of three. Maybe throw nine. Try different things that will um, tell your muscles to do something about changing it, you know? Um, and whatever you practice, make sure it works for you. Um, but I will show you an exercise that really, really works. Um, and it works, basically what you're doing is you're trying to go, you're trying to go here, and then you go to go here, and then you go here. And if you get that down, then you go in here, in here, and then in here. You're trying to make sure, what it does is two things. It, it enables you to find good grip pressure so that you're finding the treble, and then you're keeping it straight and then also being able to adjust. So that's something that really works for me um, and, and, it, and it works great. So, because it helps you when also you're trying to get into a, into a double to adjust, you know, you so many times you see outside, 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 when you want to see outside, outside, inside. And I'm very lucky in the fact that that's come good for me doing these sort of drills. So see if it works for you. It's also really important that in doing this drill, make sure you don't finish on this drill. This is a drill you want to do, maybe to start or earlier on in the session that you're going to practice um, because you don't want to finish with the feeling of outside, outside, in or above, above, below or even just straight. What you want to finish on is a nice tight grouping um, towards the end of the drill um, and then you go back to obviously your following in your nice grouping or going for the 180s, whatever you want to try and do, just make sure you're trying to get them all the same sort of level um, and around nice hitting the barrel um, and then you can get more of them. Thanks for watching, I uh, hope you enjoyed it, let me know how you get on and uh, yeah, speak to you all soon. Um, but main thing is, yeah, work on your own throw. Look at where your weaknesses are in your game. My, I've got current weaknesses at the moment with my counting. So I've got a whiteboard over there and I'm gonna start chalking my own games at home. I'm gonna stop using the app because I've realized that that's a weakness I have because I've not chalked a lot of games. A lot of them are digital um, and I want to have that in my locker that if I have to go chalk a game, I'm not gonna be nervous about it. You know, I've been in games thinking about, oh, you know, I'll chalk in a minute if I lose. <laughs> so I have to make sure I keep winning, which, you know, is okay, but I don't want any weaknesses in my game that I can do something about. You know, time and being patient and growing, that's part of it. But something I can just do a little bit of extra training, a bit of the mental game can help. Another thing that I personally struggle with is sometimes grip pressure. You know, because I'm working in a physical job and, and day to day, sometimes my grip pressure, if I'm tired, my, my forearm muscles are tight and I can't fully relax and follow through, which affects the amount of 180s and 140s I will hit. So for me, You've got to know where your weaknesses are. You know, have a look at your own game, or as I say, get have a, have a look, get someone else to have a look, um, and and yeah, go through it. But I hope it helps. Um, let me know how you get on, what you think of the video, and uh, yeah, happy darting.